The number of species that live in the ocean is unknown. While scientists estimate that 91% of ocean species have yet to be classified, the global scientific community continues to amass as much knowledge as possible about ocean life. And when it comes to the extinct creatures of the sea, some might intrigue and maybe even also terrify you, like this member of the Medusozoa family, also known as the oldest and largest jellyfish in history, and known as the Burgozoa medusa. This one gigantic guy was floating and lurking in the seas unapologetically. And they identify as a large percentage as members of the Medusoa family, which are a unique type of Cyndidaria as part of the jellyfish community. As well, researchers have used a collection of unusual fossils to identify the world's earliest species of swimming jellyfish. As this lampshade looking creature dates back more than 500 million years and might have been one of the ocean's top predators, considering how this, like most jellyfish, as they do not have a bone structure or organs, would swallow their prey whole. Being half a billion year old animals, it held its own against other prehistoric predators, despite how soft-bodied they are. They also preserve pretty well within the fossil beds, even though they are made up of 95% water, which, you know, is rare but not impossible. Hence to the Burgersoya medusa's discovery. Personally, I am a giant nerd when it comes to jellyfish. I love jellyfish so much, in fact, that I created and drew a jellyfish coloring book because I'm obsessed with them, as I also cover the four major classes of jellyfish, Cubozoa, Hydrozoa, Cyphozoa, and Starozoa. And fun fact, even though the Burgersoya medusa is a very intense and large extinct jellyfish, there is also the Stegio medusa gigantea, also known as the giant phantom jellyfish. And it is the only species in the monotypic genus of the deep sea jellyfish community. It's four large lasagna-like tentacles blankets the environment in and it can also grow more than 10 meters. Other than the fact there are hundreds and thousands and hundred thousand types of jellyfish, it would also make sense that the Burgersio and Medusa, also not the only original branch had survived, its descendants would also evolve over time. Personally, my favorite would be the fried egg jellyfish, which the genus is also called the Phallocellophora camsatia tica, and it also looks like a, a fried egg and it grows into very large sizes. Okay, sorry, that's enough about jellyfish, let's talk about the other extinct ones. Tribolites are arthropods that managed to survive in the ocean for about 270 million years, and it was one of the most successful marine species of all time. Their exoskeletons are easily translated into fossils, and so there are also tons of information about our tribolites. There were also a huge variety of tribolites in the existence as there are the bottom dwellers that scavenged for food. While others swam through the open oceans eating plankton, some were small but the largest grew to a foot and a half long weighing up to 10 pounds. They went through long decline after their peak about 521 million years ago. Their dwindled population was completely eradicated during the Permian extinction around around 252 million years ago. The Permian extinction event was the third mass extinction and was the largest. In a study, uh, in a study by MSU Today, they noted that it could also be due to the fact of their molting habits that had led to extinction of once hardy tribolite. As each time they had shed out their outer skeleton, it could also be a dangerous time for the creature. Research published by a Michigan State University paleontologist suggests that inconsistency of the molten style coupled with inefficient physiology contributed to the demise of these prehistoric relatives of today's crabs and lobsters, again, around 250 million million years ago. One researcher's proposed connections between the arthropod molting and evolutionary fate is based on two pieces of evidence. One, the inconsistency of their molting patterns that characterize tribolites, in contrast to the consistent patterns seen in modern arthropods. And two, their observation that there are certain tribolites that had fewer body segments tended to live longer, evolutionary speaking, than those of those who have many segments. I mean, these giant sea bugs did swarm and it did show through the many fossils of how they would die as a unit. Paleosauruses have received much attention because they were the first extinct and fossilized reptiles to be found. This huge marine reptile that went extinct during the fifth extinction event on the planet at the end of the Cretaceous period, as it experienced its heyday around 203 million years ago and disappeared from the earth about 66 million years ago. They were probably warm-blooded air breathers with flippers on each side of their four limbs. A hundred species of the Paleosaurus have been identified. Some had had long necks and ate similar creatures, while others had short necks and were apex predators. In regards to their extinction though, this was precisely what occurred at the end of the Cretaceous period when a majority of plankton species disappeared as part of the mass extinction event. Plankton eating fish or plankton eating fish vital food sources of the Paleosaurus and Mosasaurus also dropped in number, triggering the reptile's disappearance. And here's a little game for you today. What current animal in this current time would be the closest relative to the Plesiosaurus? Is it A, a seal, B, Komodo dragon, C, a turtle, or D, crocodile? If you guess C, you're correct. Turtles are actually the closest relatives to the apex predator. And if you've seen Looney Tunes with Cecil the turtle, he's definitely an apex predator. Gorgiotosha is a extant genesis or genesis of the Aetiosaur from the late Triassic of the North Carolina period. <laughs> the North Carolina period. Gorgias Stoches is a 
extinct genus of the Ichthyosaurus from the late Triassic of North Carolina. The next closest relatives to dinosaurs and petrosaurs are crocodiles, and their early relatives sorted under the name Pseudosauria, also known as false crocodiles. One notable subgroup of early crocodile relatives were heavy armored terrestrial animals, which mostly ate ferns. And these creatures is unique among Ichthyosaurus as having cervical neck osteoderms that nearly wrapped around the entire neck and are strongly angled to give a neck hexagonal shape in a cross section. The lateral side and the paramedian upper side of each pair of prominent spines discovered in the late 19th century is a relatively well-known member of this obscure group as birds and crocodiles are the only osteosaurs or archaeosaurs that are still living in today's world. Given the vast size of the ocean, it is impossible to know the exact number of species that live there. And creatures like the Camaroceras, as these wizard-looking cone-headed creatures, had large tentacles that used to trap and consume their prey. This animal was a giant cephalopod with a cretaneous beak like these modern sea dwellers, and modern cephalopods include octopuses and squids. The Camaroceras had large tentacles that they used to trap and consume prey, and these tentacles protrude from their faces with their bodies wrapped in their shells, and they would probably hung out at the bottom of the ocean, stalking their next meal. The Ordovician extinction event was the first mass extinction event on the planet approximately 443 million years ago. Camaroceras first appearance about 470 million years ago while the Ordovician extinction event didn't wipe out the entire creature as they were gone soon after the loss of diversity. I'm making a lot of mistakes here for scientists, please forgive me. Ammonites were also another tentacle-like squid creature with a shell that went extinct. While Ammonites were born with a small shell, they elongated it by building new sections. Ammonite is a mollusk that went extinct 66 million years ago during the Cretaceous extinction event and they're commonly found as fossils, but their shells are the only ones that are found intact. No fossilized of their soft tissues have been discovered, making it really hard to determine this animal's lifestyle accurately. It was also most likely they were excellent swimmers that lived in the open ocean, and they used their shells as a flotation device that they controlled through buoyancy. While they were born with a small shell, they elongated it by building, as I said, new sections, and, and the old sections became too small, they would accommodate their body as it sealed off those sections. These created a spiral shape through a very few ammonites were not spiraled, as well as the Tylosaurus is also a genuses of type, predatory marine reptiles also known as mosasaurs, these reptiles lived during the late Cretaceous period, approximately 87 to 82 million years ago. Tylosauruses were formidable marine predators that belonged to a group of aquatic reptiles related to a modern day snake and mon monitor lizards. Like other mosasaurs, Tylosaurus had several adaptions for life in the water. It had paddle like limbs modified into flippers for swimming, a streamlined body for efficient movement, and a powerful tail for propulsion. Tylosaurus had a mouth full of sharp conical teeth, well suited for capturing and eating a variety of prey including fish and other marine reptiles. Its jaw structure allowed it to consume relatively large prey compared to its body size, and Tylosaurus along other mosasaurs became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period around 66 million years ago. The cause of their extinction is thought to be linked to the mass extinction event that marked the end of the Mesozoic era. Helicopteron, or I like to call helicopter animal, is an extinction of genus of shark-like fish that lived during the Permian period. Approximately 290 million years ago, it is known for its unique, distinctive tooth whorl, a spiral arrangement of teeth that forms a circular saw-like structure. Helicopteron fossils are rare, and initially only the tooth whorls are actually known. The first fossils were actually discovered in the western United States, including Idaho and Nevada, as well as in Russia and Kazakhstan. Due to the rarity of its completion, Helicopteron sets best scientists initially thought and struggled to reconstruct the fish jaws accurately. Different theories were proposed that regarding the placement of the tooth whorl included whether it was located on the upper or the lower jaw. Helicopteron is believed to have been a cartilaginous fish, similar to those moderns of sharks, as its tooth whorl suggests a specialized feeding adaption possibly for preying on soft-bodied cephalopods or other marine organisms. The exact diet, however, remains a subject of speculation as it existed during the late Paleozoic era. It became extinct at the end of the Permian er period around 252 million years ago, and its cause of its extinction like that of many other marine organisms during this era is not entirely clear. Megalania, as you know, is a little bit like on Komodo dragons, and if you don't know, actually these dragons are descendants to modern uh, monitor lizards. But these Indonesian native reptiles aren't your average gecko. In fact, apex predators, as they dominate their servers in the ecosystems they thrive in, Komodo dragons hunt and ambush their prey of all types, considering they also act in packs, making them even more dangerous. Komodo dragons eat by tearing large chunks of flesh, swallowing them whole while holding onto the carcass while onto their forelegs. And if their intense bite and fierce aggression doesn't terrify you, then their saliva might. Komodo dragons have good mouth hygiene, but they also contain a variety of highly septic bacteria that would also bring down their prey. Which brings us to their predecessor, Megalania. Like the Komodo dragon, these giant
uh, these extra gigantic monitor lizards were also the Komodo dragons, but of course, just bigger. Early estimates the length of the largest Megalania at 23 feet, with a maximum weight of approximately 1,000 pounds. And just like the toxic saliva of the Komodo dragon, the Megalania had venom stored in its jaw that would act as an anticoagulant, which would force the prey to bleed out and profusely lead to septic shock. The last time this guy was around was around 50,000 years ago, and their home base was in the wilderness of, of course, Australia. I know this might freak some people out, but I think this guy looks cute. Anomalocarius canadensis. The Anomalocarius went extinct about 500 million years ago, and these animals were similar to the arthropods, but were distinctly different groups of animals. All of them in the entire genus are extinct, and they may have been one of the first apex predators in the scene. It looks like a shrimp, and it grew over a foot long, and it and its undulated flaps extended from its body sides, allowing it to swim through water. It probably used its rigid and intimidating frontal appendages to capture prey, and it may have also consumed animals like the tribalites. Although some people might think they look gross considering they also look like a shrimp, just think about that shrimp from Shark Tale who was trying to convince the mob boss shark not to eat it. I feel bad for him. He's not gonna eat it. Scientists estimate that 91% of ocean species have yet to be classified and that more than 80% of our ocean is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. But with all those cool science comes but with all that cool science comes with cool history of these amazing sea creatures. And speaking of history, that's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe. My name is Jess, and I wish you all the best. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.